The new documentary is Destination NBA, a G League odyssey. And joining us, a uh, longtime NBA player, now president of the G League, Sharif Abdul Rahim. Uh, thanks for doing this. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Ryan. Thank you for having me. So I think anybody that's ever played at any single level of basketball, whether it be in the pros like yourself or just a guy trying to not break his ankles and pick up, you'll meet that one guy that was pretty good and he'll say like, oh, the coach screwed me or I, I screwed up my knee. You know, I had a transfer, right? Like everybody thinks that plays basketball, they were this close. And when I've watched the G League over the years, um, you know, there's a lot of guys playing going, if I just get my opportunity, but you played in the league, you put up big numbers. What do you think is the biggest separation between the 450 plus that play in the NBA and all the other players trying to get a chance? Yeah, you know, I think, I think, you know, when you're, you're in, you know, if you watch, you know, you speak of the documentary, um, you know, I think Spencer Dinwiddie really, um, We'll, we'll outline it, but when you, when you're close, as as close as guys are that play in the G League, you know, is really you know taking advantage and understanding, you know, what it is in your situation and your role that makes you an NBA player. You know, there, I think there are guys with the talent. I think there's you know guys um, with the ability, but I think a lot of times the separator are just those that understand. You know, what their role is, you know, what are the you know, kind of um, tangible um, things that will, will allow them to have an NBA career. Um, and, you know, that, you know, we see that in, in our league, you know, day in and day out. You, know, you watch the finals, it's, you know, guys like Duncan Robinson and Gabe Benson or the, you know, Miami Heat that started um, in the G League or um, Bruce Brown that played a lot his first couple of years in the G League. But, you know, those players that are able to just, you know, really um, figure out how they fit in the NBA and on the NBA team um, and bring value and bring value are, are the ones. Yeah, when football, like the old story would be, OK, you're the, this big time receiver, you put up numbers in college and then you get to the pros and it's like, OK, you got to figure out a way to survive, right? Whether it's special teams running kick coverage, you know, being somebody who can maybe get some kind of separation on first down. You're never going to be a star. You're never going to be these things. In basketball, I think it's even harder because anyone that's this good to even play in the G League means they were scoring a million points like their entire lives. Yeah, and, and, and in some ways, sometimes it's like redefining yourself. You know, I think sometimes, you know, and, and you know, I talk to people and sometimes the, the most confusing or perplexing thing is like, you know, a guy was a great college player, but yet he wasn't able to figure it out in the NBA and you know sometimes that you know that thing that makes you special in college isn't necessarily what will transfer to the NBA game it's a different game and you know again I think it's just the the people the players that are able to figure out how they find something that is really valuable for a team or for the NBA and and they stick to that and, and that allows them to have you know really good careers and you know other guys they you know they play in our league or they may play other places they're still really good players they're still um you know special talents they that skill just hadn't translated it doesn't you know necessarily translate all the time i defend the draft uh in in all the sports just because i think of just how much better you can get later on but you're you're supposed to be somebody that has an impact right away and, you know, a lot of the success, the success stories were like, oh, I didn't see that coming. It's like, okay, that guy figured out how to put in the right work, not just the work, the right work, and became that much better. You know, whether it's the G League role you have now or just playing all those years in the league, it, how often would you see somebody, you know, find themselves as a player much later than they, when they'd actually be drafted? Well, all the time. I think, you know, whether it was a, a guy like Mario Eli that, you know, played overseas and, you know, played in the old CBA and, you know, was probably a little older once he, you know, cracked and became a full-time um, NBA player. Um, you know, I, I played with guys like Mike Wilkes who had, you know, kind of, you know, moved between the NBA and been the D-League. Um, and again, was a little more mature once he got, you know, his full opportunity to younger players like Jermaine O'Neal and I were the same draft. And it was, you know, not until he, you know, was traded from, Portland and got to Indiana where people really got to see the talent that he was because he was behind so many really talented players in in Portland, you know. So um, I think it, it happens. Like everyone's journey is just a little bit different. I think that's what 
our league stands for. You see, you know, half of Ryan, half of the first round from last year's draft played in the G League, right? And, you know, so you mix that with, um, you know, four year college players, you know, some players that have you know, been longer than four years. And I think that's really the great thing about our league is that, you know, different journeys, different paths. And it, it just happens for guys, you know, in, in different ways at different times sometimes. Everyone's journey is not the same. I remember watching ESPN show Life in the D League. Uh, obviously, as an NBA guy, I loved that show as well. You really get to know the characters involved in it. But if you look at the product then versus the product now, where is the league? Yeah, I think it's night and day. You know, I think the investment from the NBA and from NBA teams, I think at that time, that was like probably early 2000s, right? And I think you probably had, you know, eight to 10 teams and we were mostly spread out across the Southeast, right? Like places um, like Asheville, um, North Carolina and and Columbus, Georgia, where, you know, now we're, you know, this year will be 31 teams, you know, 29 of them, one-to-one relationships with NBA teams. Um, NBA teams have 100% um, identified and seen the value in having their G League teams to help develop players, help players that, that, you know, are, you know, emerging and having yet kind of found their niche coaches. And we have, it's eight coaches that will be on NBA sidelines this year that got their start in, in the G League. Um, uh, Taylor Jenkins, Quinn Snyder, um, Darvin Ham. So our league overall has just, you know, really evolved into, um, you know, a special place for people to grow and develop and find their way. Um, and that's a lot of what you see in, in the documentary, um, journey to the NBA. How different is it then kind of the, the stigma of being, you mentioned half the first rounders are playing. Have you noticed just a far more open mind, uh, in just the last couple of years with players, you know, granted they're making that first round money. It's cooler to be on the NBA bench, but it, it just feels like because it's become more common that it's if there's less resistance now to just go and get minutes. Yeah, I think uh, w- without a doubt, again, again, I, I, I credit it to um, the connection with the NBA and NBA teams, the quality of life um, our players have with their G League teams. Um, our teams do a really good job of taking care of them, helping them grow, helping them develop. And in many ways, um, it's become, in, in some cases, a rite of passage that, you know, this is just how, you know, an organization goes through their development process. Obviously, they're, you know, the super, super talented guys that, you know, you know, may never play in the G League, but there are a lot of really young players uh, that will spend time in our league and, you know, they go on to be really good players. You know, a couple of years ago, Jordan Poole, before he, you know, kind of blew up in the playoffs and the finals. Um, and, and that's just the process, I think. And, and there are enough stories now and examples of players that have, you know, used the G League, the Seth Currys, the Spencer Dinwiddie's, um, Gary Payton II's that, you know, spent multiple years with us in the G League and have gone on to be really good NBA players in, in their own right. So, you know, I, I, we're a league opportunity. I think the, the players and, and people um, view us that way. In the NBA, we know guys can be selfishly driven to get their numbers, to get their contract. Um, but in the G League, you got to imagine there's plenty of players selfishly driven just to get a chance at it. How do your coaching staffs, how do the front offices handle the evaluation of like, okay, we know this guy's good, but we also know what his main goal is and, and we're still a team here? Yeah, I, again, like I, I think the, the ability of teams to help guys understand what translates. Right. Like the, the, the player that, gonna, you know, shoot every ball and, you know, average 30 point, like most likely that won't be your role, um, on the NBA team. So I think, you know, role identification, um, uh, you know, helping players kind of get an understanding and grow, um, and their understanding of the game and team, all those things have become, um, such a, an important part, the connection with the NBA team. Again, I think helps that coaches in, in, in their um, process of growing as, as coaches, all of that, um, just that investment. Um, but, it, you know, it comes down again with just the understanding of, of, of players and, and what will help them, you know, reach their goals. How has Ignite changed the G League? 
Well, I think young players overall, I think Ignite is um, a part of the landscape of professional basketball now, part of the landscape of the G League. Um, and, you know, they're unique because they it's all, you know, not all, but, you know, that team is made up primarily of um, young players that are on their way to, to the NBA that are draft eligible. Um, you know, so in the past it was, you know, Jalen Green and, and Jonathan Kaminga this past season, Scoot Henderson. Uh, we had a really talented group um, coming up this season led by Matis Bruzelis and, and Ron Holland, you know, both projected to be uh, really high draft picks. But you you couple that team and that group with, um, you know, again, half of the first round from the 2022 draft playing in the G League, for example, or um, a Mac McClung uh, playing in, in the G League, a Mason Jones playing in the G League, and you uh, you have a, just a array of talent. Gabe York playing in the G League. You just have an array of talent of uh, players from different paths, different journeys, um, playing in our league, competing, um, and it, it makes for uh, you know really good basketball, really good competition.